Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about linear recurrences. This is a particular type of recurrence. So we've started the chapter on recurrences with the last video, and now we're going to be talking about a very common type of recurrence called a linear homogeneous recurrence. And a linear homogeneous recurrence of depth d is a recursive relation of the form a sub n is some constant c1 times a sub n minus 1 uh, times plus some constant c2 times a sub n minus 2 down to cd times a sub n minus d, where c1 through cd are constants. And these a n minus 1, a n minus 2, down to a n minus d are the previous d terms of the sequence. So you're expressing a n in terms of the previous d terms, and that's why it's depth d. For a depth d sequence, you need d initial values, a0, a1, up to a d minus 1, given to you to get off the ground to determine a unique sequence. So as an example, the Fibonacci sequence, which, which we've talked about in the last video, is a linear sequence of depth 2. So we have f sub n equals f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2, that's depth 2. And the two initial conditions are f0 equals 0 and f1 equals 1. So let's look at another example of a linear recurrence that comes up in combinatorics that's a bit of a generalization of the Fibonacci numbers. So suppose a sub n is the number of binary sequences that do not contain three consecutive zeros. So in the last video, we saw the number of binary sequences that don't contain two consecutive ones. It's a similar idea here. So first of all, let's look at, let's try to determine a recurrence for a sub n in terms of previous values for sufficiently large n. We'll worry about the initial conditions um, after that. So we claim that a sub n is a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 plus a sub n minus 3, which is a linear recurrence of depth 3. And we can analyze this by counting a sub n using casework. First, let's consider the ones that end in a 1. Well, if it ends in a 1, then the previous n minus 1 entries can form any sequence of length n minus 1 that doesn't have three consecutive zeros. The 1 won't ruin that property of having no three consecutive zeros. So they have a sub n minus 1 possibilities in that case. Now, if it ends in 0, let's consider two subcases. Either it ends in 1, 0, or it ends in 0, 0. And the reason we consider these two subcases is because putting a 0 does affect maybe three having three consecutive zeros in some cases. But if we consider the ones that end in 1, 0, well, that 1 acts as a buffer. And now we can put any sequence with no three consecutive zeros of length n minus 2 in there. So there's a sub n minus 2 possibilities. If it ends in 0, 0, the previous number has to be 1 so that there's not three consecutive zeros at the end of the sequence. And so there's a sub n minus 3 possibilities in that case. So by the addition principle, we have the total a sub n is a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 plus a sub n minus 3. Now let's look at the initial conditions. We have a depth 3 recurrence. We need three initial values, a sub 0, a sub 1, and a sub 2. And to determine what these are, we notice that a sub 0 is the number of sequences of length 0 that have no three consecutive zeros, which is just the empty sequence. There's only one of those. And a sub 1 is the number of sequences that don't contain three consecutive zeros of length 1. Well, 0 and 1, both sequences are fine. So there's two possibilities in that case. Similarly, a sub 2, if it's only length 2 sequences, you'll never have three consecutive zeros. So all four length 2 binary sequences, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 are all fine. And so a sub 2 equals 4. So we have these three initial values and a recursion of depth 3. And that uniquely determines what this sequence is. And so we can recursively calculate a sub n for any n. Now, there's a general formula for solving linear recurrences. And that's why if you have a linear recurrence, it's very nice, because we have a method in general for, for finding an explicit formula in, in many cases. So we define the characteristic polynomial of the linear recurrence a sub n uh, being c sub c1 a minus a n minus 1 plus c2 a n minus 2 and so on to be x to the d, where d is the depth, minus c1 x to the d minus 1 minus c2 x to the d minus 2 down to c sub d. So you just turn that equal sign into a minus sign and then you uh, subtract to all of these where you put x to the, to the d minus i instead of a sub n minus i. So for an as an example, the characteristic polynomial of the Fibonacci sequence, because it's depth 2, we start at x squared. And then we have x squared minus x to the 1 minus x to the 0. And so that x to the 1 is just x. So we can write this as x squared minus x minus 1. 
And that's because these coefficients here are just one. These Cs are just one multiplied by the Fs. So what can we do with this characteristic polynomial? Well, here's one theorem that we can say right off the bat. So if R is a root of the characteristic polynomial, now a root means something that you plug into a polynomial and you get zero. So if you have a root of that polynomial, so a solution to that polynomial equaling zero, then the sequence R to the N, meaning R to the zero, R to the one, R to the two, R to the three, et cetera, that sequence satisfies the recursion that you're taking the characteristic polynomial of. So using the same constants as we had before, we, we can understand um, the root as saying, okay, well, this is the characteristic polynomial. If I plug in R into the characteristic polynomial, I'm just replacing that characteristic polynomial's X with R and I get this equation. And if I multiply both sides of this equation by R to the N minus D, that raises each of these exponents to you know, N minus D plus D is N. So I start with R to the N and then minus C1 R to the N minus one minus C2 R to the N minus two down to CD R to the N minus D equals zero. And notice then that means that if A sub N is R to the N and I plug that into the recursion, that's exactly what I get here because these minus signs these, these negative terms I can put on the other side of the equation to get R to the N equals C1 R to the N minus one plus C2 R to the N minus two down to CD R to the N minus D. And that's exactly what you get when you plug in A sub N equals R to the N into the recursion for each N, for N minus one as well and N minus two and so on. And so you can, we'll rewrite the recursion down here just to make it clear what we're doing. A sub N was C1 A1 N minus one plus C2 A N minus two down to CD A N minus D. And so we see that these equations match. So R to the N does satisfy the recursion, but it doesn't mean that the sequence equals R to the N because of the initial values. You might not be quite equal to that sequence. It's just some sequence that satisfies the recursion. So here's the main theorem about how to find the actual explicit formula. In the case that the roots R1 through RD of the degree D characteristic polynomial are all distinct, if you don't have any repeated roots, then then the formula, the explicit formula for a sub n is a linear combination of each of these roots to the nth power, which we know each of these individually are solutions to the linear recurrence, but then combining them all um, gives the right thing no matter what the initial conditions are. So if I have some constants b1 through bd that are multiplied by the r1 to the n, r2 to the n, etc., cetera, um, to give me a unique solution given the initial values. So let's see how we would find this explicit um, construction in practice. Consider the sequence we had on the last quiz, which was if a0 is 2, a1 is 1, and a n is a n minus 1 plus 2 a n minus 2 for all n greater than or equal to 2. Well, the characteristic polynomial of this equation is x squared minus x minus 2 because of that 2 there. And this polynomial factors as x minus 2 times x plus 1. So this equals 0 only when x is either 2 or minus one. So minus one and two are the roots of this characteristic polynomial. They're distinct, so we can use this theorem. So minus one and two are like R1 and R2 here. And D is just two, we only have two roots. So now we know that A sub N is B1 times two to the N plus B2 times minus one to the N for some constants B1 and B2. Now, how do we find these constants? Well, we have to solve for them using the initial values that were given. So a0 is 2 and a1 is 1. We can make equations out of this by plugging in 0 on both sides of this equation. And we get b1 plus 2 times 2 to the 0 plus b2 times minus 1 to the 0 is 2, because I'm plugging it into this equation. And a1 is 1. So a1 is uh, b1 times 2 to the 1 plus b2 times minus 1 to the 1. And we know that has to equal 1 by this equation. So now we have two equations and two variables. Let's simplify this. 2 to the 0 and minus 1 to the 0 are both 1. So we just get b1 plus b2 equals 2. And 2b1 minus b2 equals 1. It's a system of two equations and two variables. So let's solve it. We can solve for b2 in terms of b1 over here. b2 is 2 minus b1. And plug that in for this b2 over here, 2 minus b1. And we see that 2b1 minus, minus b1 is 3b1. This minus two can go on the other side and make a three. And we conclude that B1 equals one. 
Finally, we plug that in over here, and we get 2 minus 1 is 1. So actually, b1 and b2 are both 1 in this case. And we plug that back into this yellow formula up here, and we get the explicit formula for a sub n, 2 to the n plus minus 1 to the n. With, you know, the constants are 1 multiplied by these, but 1 times anything is itself. So we just drop those 1s in this case. So there's a way of deriving a formula without guessing it first, without having to find a pattern and guess what the pattern is. We can derive it explicitly using the characteristic polynomial. So now you try. So try looking at this same recursion, a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 2 a sub n minus 2, but with different initial values. So say a0 equals 4 and a1 equals 5. And now try to find an explicit formula for a sub n in terms of n by solving using the roots of the characteristic polynomial and solving for that b1 and b2 co coefficients that you have to have. So that's all for today, and we'll see you next time.